Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast. Hour one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people on the CNN panel at this moment. The giant table. It's like Knights of the Semicircle table there. All the talking heads, the woke, intersectionally diverse crew on CNN preparing for Donald Trump to surrender at the New York courthouse. That's what it says. Soon, Trump expected to surrender at New York courthouse. I want to begin the program today with a montage that a friend of mine put together. It's three minutes 42 seconds. Yes, there's a method to the madness here. What the sound you are about to hear is three minutes, 42 seconds long. It is the media coverage of Donald Trump since 2017. 58 House Democrats have recently voted to advance articles of impeachment. Impeach him first and then indict him. Yes, the president, a sitting president, can be indicted. Even if the president were to somehow find some way to terminate Mueller, the the indictments would continue to grind. You could impeach anybody on anything. Uh, You can try and indict. He is not functioning as the president of the United States. Frankly, if he ever gets indicted, he'll have insanity as a defense, (laughs) I suppose, from a criminal charge. Um, But it's hardly, you know, this is a serious matter. You're starting to hear people talk about the possibility that Donald Trump leaves office in two years and then finds himself in the crosshairs of these New York prosecutors. This sitting president can and should be indicted. President, there for sure is more than likely going to serve some jail time. It's clear that Trump is the target and he'll be indicted eventually. Uh, On the day Donald Trump leaves office, the Justice Department uh, may indict him. Now there is talk of jail time for the president. That Mueller could indict the president for obstruction of justice. Donald Trump should be indicted for calling a cooperating witness a rat. He should have been indicted. The sitting president can be indicted by the Justice Department. Why aren't we at the target, Trump, having committed crimes to get the presidency? So why aren't we at an indictment yet? I think there's generally consensus the president has probably committed indictable crimes. It's very strongly in favor of indicting the president when he is out of office. That there may be enough evidence to indict Trump. Is Donald Trump going to be indicted? Maybe it'll happen. Maybe he'll go to prison. I, you know. Will he ever see the inside of a prison cell? DA could get a ham sandwich indicted. Hey, listen. Trump's the Big Mac. Even if Donald Trump himself is not ever indicted, there is another way that prosecutors can actually indict the entire Trump org. We hope uh, that the Attorney General sees the importance of moving ahead uh, with this indictment moving ahead with locking Steve Bannon up. The whole enchilada, the whole company, indicted by next week. Why not pursue it and see what happens? Merrick Garland, if you indict Trump, you'll be my person of the year, of the decade. The only thing worse than indicting him would be not indicting him. Would be folly not to indict them. Donald Trump is an ordinary citizen and is committing crimes right now. I like the idea of Mark Meadows going to jail for the rest of his life, but I still think that the committee has laid out that the person on top of all of this, in charge of all of this, doing all of this, was Donald Trump. I think now for him not to indict, frankly, would cause this country more harm than even if he indicts and there's a hung jury or not a successful conviction. I think there should be no case in which they wouldn't indict. I don't think we should be treating him the way other ex-presidents were treated. I think the extent of what Donald Trump's done is so egregious that no attorney general, uh, no fair-minded attorney general would have any choice. According to The Atlantic, Garland is preparing to indict Trump despite moving at the cautious pace of an institutionalist. The only reasons Trump hasn't been indicted by now is because he's a former president and because he has 
handpicked judges on his side. Accountability for some people means that we get a pound of flesh from Donald Trump and that he ends up behind bars. Don't you think it's about time for special counsel Jack Smith to just indict Trump? And would such a move take Trump off the campaign trail. Is this the charge you would want him to be indicted on? Would a January 6th DOJ indictment or say a Georgia election interference charge carry more weight? That's three years of commentary about the Democrats wanting to get Donald Trump. A lot of Republicans today are accusing Democrats of weaponizing prosecutions to get Donald Trump. They've been calling for three years for the man to be indicted on something, anything, putting behind bars, throw him under the jail, something. The Republicans who say the Democrats are weaponizing the prosecutorial system to get Donald Trump actually don't know what they are talking about. Democrats have been doing this for quite a while. you got to remember your history. In 2005, Tom DeLay, highly effective House Republican leader, the Travis County District Attorney in Austin, Texas, indicted him for campaign finance violations. He was found guilty by the libs in Travis County, that's Austin, Texas, thrown out on appeal. Then there was Rick Perry. Rick Perry threatened to veto legislation if it didn't include defunding a program in Austin, Texas. The Travis County DA indicted him claimed he was uh, threatening intimidation in exchange for getting something from the legislature. It was thrown out. She herself went to jail on a DUI. Then there's Bob McDonald, the former governor of Virginia, who was indicted uh, because his wife was getting favors from people. It was thrown out by the United States Supreme Court. It was Jack Smith, the guy investigating Trump for the Mar-a-Lago classified documents, who prosecuted Bob McDonald. Democrats have already weaponized prosecutions against Democrats using campaign and campaign finance laws to do it. And here now is what they're attempting to do to Donald Trump. According to Mike Isikoff at Yahoo News, what the indictments will be is 34 counts related to business transactions that are all misdemeanors. Meaning you don't go to jail, you pay a small fine, you don't lose your right to vote anything. But the statute of limitations has expired. So what the district attorney in uh, Manhattan a county district attorney, not a state-level prosecutor, but a county prosecutor, what he intends to do is claim there's an overarching federal campaign finance violation for which Donald Trump has never been prosecuted and never found guilty, and he's going to use those to get Donald Trump on misdemeanors, but because he wants to show a federal crime, he can elevate those misdemeanors to felonies, but no one has ever been found guilty of this particular federal crime. In fact, the one time anyone's been prosecuted for it, former vice presidential candidate uh, John Edwards from the Democratic side, uh, he was thrown out by a jury. What happened based on the claims from press reports thus far? is that Stormy Daniels, the porn star who Donald Trump had an affair with, and let's just stop playing alleged, he slept with Stormy Daniels, he lacks impulse control, couldn't keep it in his pants, had he, we wouldn't be here today. Stormy Daniels threatened to go public with her story, so Michael Cohen paid her a lot of money. The Trump organization itself, the company, then paid Michael Cohen back for doing so. If it was just a paperwork violation, if it really it was a pass-through through Michael Cohen to Stormy Daniels, uh, they documented it wrong on the paperwork, that's just a misdemeanor, if caught. What the DA wants to claim is that it's a campaign finance violation, a federal campaign finance violation, because Donald Trump needed to pay Stormy Daniels to keep her quiet lest he lose the vote. This is the Democrats' theory of the case. I need all of you, left, right, center, moderate, independent, liberal, progressive, conservative, to pay attention here. This is what the prosecutor alleges. The prosecutor alleges, we are led to believe, that if Donald Trump didn't pay Stormy Daniels to shut up, that conservative voters might abandon him in the run-up to the election. The same conservative voters 
who stood by their man when the Billy Bush interview came out about Trump bragging about grabbing women by their you-know-what, that those people who were still standing with Trump would abandon him over the Stormy Daniels allegations. That's the theory of his case. you got to show that to get around the statute of limitations for all the other 33 charges because those are misdemeanors and the statute of limitations has passed. Donald Trump's defense is very simple. Had he not paid that hundred some odd thousand dollars to Stormy Daniel, he'd be on the hook for millions to Melania Trump in their prenup agreement. So it wasn't a campaign finance violation. It was about his marriage and prenup. That then throws out the campaign finance violation, which means the others are misdemeanors, which means good luck. Can't prosecute him. The Democrats have wanted him prosecuted for anything. They don't like him. And you can't have a rational discussion with the Democrat about the merits of prosecuting Donald Trump on this particular issue because they just want to get him. They just want him to go away. They want him in prison. I played for you a three-minute, 42-second montage of the coverage of Donald Trump since 2017, wish casting by the left that Donald Trump will go to prison. And that's what we're getting today, wish casting by the left. And they claim moral relativism if you deny it. They claim you're for Donald Trump if you deny it. They claim you're not for justice if you don't want Donald Trump to go to jail for this. I actually am for justice, which means I don't want to undermine the justice system. You stretch it too far, our system of justice tears, and this is tearing the justice system. Trying to rope in old charges with a campaign finance violation, even Joe Biden's administration refuses to prosecute Donald Trump on. A county DA in New York. Democrats did this to Tom DeLay. They did this to Rick Perry. They did this to Bob McDonald. They're now doing this to Donald Trump. You're about to see the Republicans around the country start doing it to Democrats. It will not make it right for them to do it either. But you know what's going to happen. It's the logical consequence of this continuing to go forward and forward and, and push and push the boundaries. The media can make a heyday here. We can dwell on the historicity of it. We could do our Walter Cronkite impression of today, ladies and gentlemen, the, for the first time in American history, a former president of the United States is facing indictment in the county courthouse of lower Manhattan. But he shouldn't be. He's only doing it because progressives have insisted he be indicted. They don't care for what, for something. If they could get him for jaywalking, they, they would. The irony here, the ultimate irony of this case brought by Alvin Bragg, a case even his predecessor said shouldn't be brought, a case the New York Times and the Washington Post said shouldn't be brought. The irony here is Donald Trump once said, that his voters would stick with him if he got out in Fifth Avenue and shot someone. The irony is, based on Alvin Bragg's history of not prosecuting crimes in New York, particularly gun crimes, if Donald Trump killed a person on Fifth Avenue, Alvin Bragg probably wouldn't prosecute him. But because he covered up a payment to a porn star, Alvin Bragg's found one thing to try to get Donald Trump for. Yes, 100%, I believe it's true that Donald Trump had the affair with Stormy Daniels. He has a history of philandering. But it doesn't mean this is the thing you try to throw him in jail on. And by the way, all of these charges together, they're not even charges by which one goes to jail in New York. You pay fines for them were he to be found guilty. It would be highly unusual for him to go to jail for this. But because they hate the man so bad, for the sin of beating them, they're going to try to throw him in prison on a charge, but for a reach into federal law is a misdemeanor for which the statute of limitations has expired. This undermines the rule of law in this country. It's not about the rule of law in this country. You stretch justice and the rule of law so far, you tear it. And today in New York, we're hearing the ripping sound of the justice system of America, and with it, the ripping apart of the democratic underpinnings of this country.
Well, CNN's got up its second seven-person panel. Uh, we've gone from the political, from the the lawyers to the political team. Oh uh, my goodness, everybody's getting their money's worth today out of this. Look, I, I gotta I gotta address something here. There are a lot of people who say, well, Stormy Daniels signed a letter saying she never had an affair with Donald Trump, and Michael Cohen's lawyer sent a letter to the FEC denying he paid Stormy Daniels. You're absolutely right. That happened. Neither of them were under oath. When put under oath, they both said the affair happened and the payment happened, and Michael Cohen went to prison because of it. You can choose to believe Donald Trump, who is the only person who hasn't changed his story in this case, and he's got a financial incentive given his prenup to keep his story consistent. Or you can believe the two people who lied and then were put under oath and told the truth. You can believe Donald Trump, and there are a lot of people who will believe Donald Trump. They they do not care. A lot of them actually understand he's a serial philanderer who committed adultery multiple times on his wives. But they don't care because they're in stand-by-your-man mode. they got to circle the wagons. Had Donald Trump kept his pants zipped up and not decided to scratch an itch by having a fling with a porn star, none of this would be happening today. Donald Trump is not really a victim here any more than Alvin Bragg is a good guy. Donald Trump is here because of his lack of impulse control, and Alvin Bragg is here because of his lack of impulse control. An unstoppable force and an immovable object are colliding in New York York today. Donald Trump, more likely than not, unless you're completely inside his cult of personality, Donald Trump, more likely than not, had an affair with a porn star. But you know what? That's not illegal. And the crimes that Donald Trump is being charged with, according to Michael Isikoff at Yahoo News, none of them are felonies. And the statute of limitations has passed for all of them. The only reason we're here today, other than his lack of impulse control, is because Alvin Bragg decided to create a novel theory of tying these misdemeanors for which the statute of limitations is applied to a federal campaign finance violation so that he can stretch those misdemeanors into felonies and keep the statute of limitations alive. It is a case for which lawyers in his own district attorney's office said was a bridge too far. It is a case the New York Times, the the Washington Post, even Jen Psaki on MSNBC says they shouldn't be going in this direction. But the left has been out for blood against Donald Trump since he beat Hillary Clinton. You can't rationalize with them. You can't uh, reason with them. You can't make a case that this actually isn't about justice because they have become true believers that unless Donald Trump goes to prison, there is no justice in the world. We will see an undoing of our system in maybe 50 years from now. You'll get some progressives saying, yeah, it was a mistake back in the day doing this to Trump, but... Not anytime soon. They're not going to be able to concede a mistake happened at all. When we come back, I'm going to take your phone calls. 877-973-7425. You get to react nationwide right here on The Eric Erickson Show. 877-973-7425. Welcome. Crowds are building outside the courthouse in New York. I've actually got a TV set up here. I've got it on watching. What's so funny yesterday, I do have to laugh. Some of the the diehard uh, young Republicans of New York City staged a protest outside the courthouse. There were like five of them. And they were like, oh, big crowd, big crowd, big crowd. They kept pointing the cameras up. It's like nobody showed up. Today, there's a larger crowd on both sides. You got Marjorie Taylor Greene, the congresswoman from Georgia up there. Uh, I kind of suspect Marjorie wants to get arrested to show her fealty to Donald Trump, that they can be they can be arraigned at the same time or some such. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. It'd be a great fundraising opportunity for her. Now, let's go to the phones here. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Omega, you are going to be up first today. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I'd like to tell the Democrats what they've done. They have put Donald Trump in the history books 
with political per, uh, people that have been persecuted with Nelson Mandela and Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh, my. Um, you're you're going to stir some people up with those comparisons. But they were politically persecuted. And Donald Trump is the same thing. No matter, you know, what you think about him, he will go in that category. Yep, uh, he will indeed, uh, definitely. I mean, this clearly is a political persecution. Omega, thank you very much for the phone call. 877-973-7425. Okay, uh, we got to go play some audio here. This is Ramesh Panuru from National Review on with MSNBC's Morning Joe. I'm wondering, do you do you see what 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 many of us see, and that is a Republican Party that seems to be split between people, some people at, at the National Review, some people at other uh, conservative outlets, certainly uh, the Republican establishment, a lot of thought leaders in the Republican Party wanting to move away from Donald Trump, uh, perhaps more towards Ron DeSantis or another candidate, and yet the base of the party still pulling them back to Trump uh, and setting up a, another possible general election loss. Well, I think there's no question that a very, very significant chunk of Republican voters still see Donald Trump as their champion. Uh, and the scenario that a lot of people had hoped for, uh, including me, that uh, that Trump would just sort of fade as a political presence um, and, uh, and voters would be wanting to move on, I think that's been shown not to be true. I mean, this is going to be a real fight, and Trump can't be counted out for the Republican nomination. I'd say he can't be counted out for winning the presidency altogether in November of 2024. You can't. One more from Ramesh. So let's say that, as as you're suggesting, that there are other cases that are brought, and let's say that those are stronger cases. Then I think you could argue this either way. You could say, uh, in a way, people are sort of... um, uh, conditioned into thinking, well, it's okay to prosecute a former president, and the multiplicity of the charges actually helps. On the other hand, you could say the weakness of the New York case um, sort of colors the public perception and the public debate and makes it all look like, well, these are his enemies out to get him. I'm not sure which mm-hmm. of those effects predominate, but I am sure that prosecutors ought to be careful and, uh, uh, and exercise some self-restraint rather than bringing charges that don't hold up. Uh, Bring some restraint, really, New York prosecutors. Two more pieces for you. This is a montage put together of news coverage. Keep in mind, keep in mind, this is really important. Before you hear this, we have general speculation about the charges against Donald Trump. Michael Isikoff, someone leaked to CNN and Michael Isikoff. We believe from the prosecutor's office what the charges are going to be. But everything up until yesterday was speculation based on what witnesses were saying and lawyers in the New York Attorney General's office were saying. Nothing's been substantiated and won't be until the arraignment this afternoon when we actually get the specifics of the uh, of the charges. We presume these are what they are, but listen to this. As New York prepares for tomorrow's historic arraignment of Donald Trump, we're getting new CNN polling revealing how the American public is reacting to the former president's indictment. CNN political director David Chalian is breaking it all down for us. David, uh, it looks like the majority of Americans, based on this poll, actually support the move. That's right, Wolf. We uh, went into the field and did this uh, new exclusive CNN poll conducted by SSRS just after the indictment. And look at the results here. 60% of Americans approve of the indictment of Donald Trump, 40% disapprove. Look at this broken down by party, Wolf. As you might suspect, 94% of Democrats, near, nearly universal on the Democratic side, approve. But 62% of independents, that's a big number for the critical voting bloc in the middle there. And even one in five Republicans approve of the indictment. We asked folks, is Donald Trump's behavior in this Stormy Daniels matter illegal, unethical, but not illegal, or not wrong at all? Take a look. 37% of Americans say it's illegal what Donald Trump has done here. 33% say it's unethical, but not illegal. So if you add those up, the big majority say Donald Trump's done something wrong here, illegal or not. Only 10% of Americans, Wolf, say Donald Trump has done nothing wrong at all in this case. And then sort of along the lines that Donald Trump has been arguing to his supporters, 
Do Americans see this as a political matter? Overwhelmingly, they do. 76% of Americans say politics played a role in Bragg's decision, in the grand jury's decision, to indict Donald Trump. And in fact, that includes 52%, a slim majority, of independence, Wolf. So two thoughts are being held by the American people at the same time. They see politics at play, but they also believe that the indictment is the right thing to do. Even though people really didn't know what all the details were, this tells you something not good for Republicans moving forward, that while it may help Donald Trump get the Republican nomination, it's not going to help Donald Trump win an election. When you've got a fifth of Republicans think he did something wrong, you've got 94% of Democrats think he did something wrong, when only a third of them think he did something illegal, but they're still okay with the indictment, uh, those who don't think he did something illegal, that's a hell of a thing, honestly. Uh, now, you can say that uh, this is all wrong, the polling's wrong, the polling's bad. Uh, we're getting this from a lot of groups, and again, the trend lines are important here. Uh, there really isn't a poll out there that shows a majority of Americans overwhelmingly appalled or opposed to Donald Trump being indicted. People just don't like the guy outside of a hardcore set of the Republican base. And the Democrats are taking advantage of this and excited by it. Nate Silver of 538 is a guy who uh, has gotten his critics from the left for trying to play it fair, even though he is a liberal. And he said a couple of weeks ago, it was pretty obvious to him that Democrats were rooting for Donald Trump here to get the Republican nomination and doing what they could to help him. He was vilified and excoriated by people on the left. And now we have pollsters and partisans from within the Biden operation in the Politico saying, yes, in fact, they hope this gets Donald Trump the Republican nomination, that they're excited by the prospect of him being the nominee because they think he has so alienated independent voters in the country that there's no way for him to get them back, and that helps Joe Biden. And if you want proof of that, look at this polling, where a majority of independent voters find it political that Donald Trump is being indicted by Alvin Bragg, but that same majority are okay with him being indicted. They just want him to go away. That's the great conundrum here, and Republicans are going to have to navigate it. Look, in 2022, you saw Democrats bend over backwards to try to get certain Republicans nominated. They're doing it with Donald Trump right now. They think he'll be easy to beat. They did this in 2016, and it blew up in their face. But in 2018, 2020, 2022, worked like a charm. Jacob, you're going to be up next on the Eric Erickson Show. Welcome, Jacob. How are you? Hey, doing well. How are you? Good. What's going on? Um, let's say Joe Biden was to pardon President Trump. Do you think that would help him gain voters for the next election? Uh, well, he couldn't pardon him in this case because this is a state case and the president can't pardon uh, a state crime. He can only pardon a federal okay. crime. Um, yeah. And y so this one wouldn't help him. But in the Jack Smith case, the Mar-a-Lago investigation, that investigation is still out there. It's heating up. There are more and more indications uh, based on leaks from his office that Jack Smith is leaning towards indicting Trump. Yeah, Joe Biden could pardon him on that. Donald Trump would have to take the pardon. Trump would have to admit he committed a crime in order to do I mean essentially if you if you accept a pardon you're admitting you committed a crime and he would have to do that. I don't know that Trump would do that. I I suspect he would view it as as weakness on his part uh by by Trump. Um it's it's just um I I I don't know that that's something Trump would want to go along with. So I'm looking at CNN right now. They got Mick Mulvaney on there, uh, the former White House chief of staff who kind of got burned out of the whole thing. And you got a lot of Republicans behind the scenes cautioning that Republicans should not rush to defend Trump. But what's so notable about it is he's having this big event at Mar-a-Lago tonight. He's going to he's going to be arraigned and then he's going to fly home. We now know the district attorney's office says they will not do a mugshot. They're required to fingerprint him. They will not do a mugshot. They do not want to give Trump a fundraising opportunity. Uh, they will not do a perp walk where all the reporters get to watch Donald Trump parade handcuffed through the hall. They will not do that. They will not handcuff Donald Trump. They will not do that. Uh, they're treating this very gingerly in large part because they do not want to release pictures that Donald Trump can then fundraise off of which is kind of funny 
He's raised seven million dollars since the indictment was announced late Monday or late Thursday of last week. Seven million dollars, and the money keeps rolling in. After today and his his speech tonight, more will come in. There is a question about tonight, though. Who's going to show up? Who is going to show up? Which Republicans will show up? I don't know the answer to that. I bet Lindsey Graham will be there. But what other Republicans will do it? And also, if this does drag out, because if, if this goes to trial, there's a discovery process. I want to talk about that. Uh, we'll probably get into that in the 2 o'clock hour. There is a discovery process that will go forward. There will be a provision of documents and evidence to the Trump team, which means that you this could be a year, a year and a half before going to trial. Um, that 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 legitimately could happen, and that could put it in the middle of campaign season. It could put it after an election, depending on how it goes. It's what's the procedure in the process? We'll be covering that. I'll take a lot of your phone calls today as well. There is other news I do want to get to today, and we'll spend the 1 o'clock hour, uh, the next hour, doing a lot of that in large part because— uh, while there is, this is the big news, this is the news of the day, and in the 2 o'clock hour is when he'll be arraigned, the third hour of this program, he'll be arraigned in court, and we'll be talking our way through that, but uh, I don't want to ignore the other news of the day, and there is some big stuff out there, including Jill Biden's NCAA faux pas. We'll get to that. Right now, I want to tell you about Patriot Mobile. Uh, they are a cell phone provider, and they give a portion of their profits to the conservative movement. Not only are they a cell phone provider, they use the same cell towers everybody else uses, so you get guaranteed great service. And all you have to do is go to patriotmobile.com slash eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. You take your cell phone service to Patriot Mobile, tell them I sent you, you get free activation, and you get great service, and then you grow their profits, and they take their profits and give it to conservative causes you care about. The Second Amendment, the pro-life cause, a conservative parents battling wokes on school boards, Patriot Mobile does it all. All you have to do is go to PatriotMobile.com slash Eric today. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. You can also call them 972-PATRIOT. They have guaranteed great service. Tell them I sent you, you get free activation, and do business with a company that shares your values. And if you want, you can text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. Sign up for the daily email. Get the live stream. Do it all. Don't forget to sign up for the email. That's important. This week, by the way, you should know in the mornings. I'm not spending the mornings writing about politics in this morning. It kind of pained me not to write about politics this morning, given what's going on in the world, not to write about the news of the world. But uh, this is Holy Week, and I try every year, force myself actually every year, to focus on that topic in my morning emails because it actually is a more important topic. On Friday, it doesn't matter what the news of the day is. We're going to pause on Friday and do the Good Friday show. For those of you new to this, I'll just prepare you in advance. I'll explain why, very simply. Uh, In a survey of historians at Harvard, in a survey of historians at Cambridge University, in a survey of historians at Oxford University, in a separate survey of historians at some French university, in a, another survey of historians globally of what is the most important event in human history, you get things like Alexander conquering the world. Uh, you get things like the rise of the shoguns in Japan, the, the unifying factions of China to build the Chinese empire. But in the top five and usually number one, you get some random son of a carpenter in what is now Israel, being executed 2,000 years ago. It is almost always number one and is, if not number one, always in the top five. And the anniversary of that event is this Friday, and so we take a time out and pause to reflect on the most important day in human history, really the second most important day when you consider the resurrection. Whether you believe it or not, though, uh, it actually is a game-changing moment in human history uh, across the board. So we we do this, um, and in any event, we're gonna we're gonna pause on Friday and talk about that. 
Uh, right now, though, uh, I, I got to talk about Jill Biden because she has caused controversy. Jill Biden, the first lady, went to the women's NCAA basketball game. LSU, go Tigers, go Tigers. My father, very happy. LSU won. First time ever, the Lady Tigers won the NCAA basketball Final Four championship game, and Jill Biden wants Iowa, the losers, to come to the White House. I kid you not. There was all that controversy about the LSU player doing some sort of hand gesture, aggressive hand gesture. I don't care, and none of you actually care. It's just something people wanted to make you care about online, and so you thought you did, but nobody really cares about what the girl did on the court, and the other girl had done the same thing. Nobody cares. What you should care about is that historically the winning team goes to the White House. And Jill Biden decided that she wanted the winners and the losers both to come to the White House at the same time to overshadow the history of LSU winning. Way to go, Jill Biden. Today, the White House has walked it back and said, essentially, she doesn't really mean it. She doesn't really mean it. Uh, <laughs> that she was essentially uh, trying to commend advancements in women's sports and be supportive of all the women, but only the winner gets to come to the White House, and so that will be LSU, as it should be. Uh, what a mess she made of that. She went off script, and in going off script, she got herself in trouble. Uh, it was it was a dumb thing to do, caught up in the moment, uh, but LSU won uh, and in any event, and uh, UConn, I guess, won the men's. I don't keep up with basketball. I don't. Um, I'm more likely to pay attention to college basketball than the NBA. I just don't pay attention to the NBA. I'm ready for, for college football to return. In the meantime, we have baseball. Oh, by the way, um, let's see if we can do well. Maybe we shouldn't. Yeah, we should. Hey, Siri, what was the Mets score yesterday? The Mets were definitively oh, beaten. By the Brewers definitively the beaten. Zero to ten. Oh, I say that because my CFO is right next door to me and he can hear me through the wall and he's a huge Mets fan and I just felt the need as a Braves fan to rub it in. Zero to 10. Steve Cohen needs to pump some more money into the Mets, clearly. All right, it's Eric Erickson here across the nation. When we come back, your phone calls, 877-973-7425. And also, we will spend the next hour on some of the other big news of the day, including NATO has a new member. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.